the future of food looks like this. It's a new operation run by a company called Impossible Foods that's churning out something that looks, feels, tastes, and smells like ground beef. Hell, it even bleeds like a medium rare burger. But this patty is actually all plant, a product of genetic engineering. It's the first step in an effort to take on the multi-billion dollar meat industry. You won't be disappointed in these steaks, ma'am. It's hard to overstate the magic of a traditional burger. The taste, for one, but also the smell and texture. That's thanks to lots of different kinds of proteins, most importantly myoglobin, which contains something called heme. That's the taste of iron you get. When you're cooking a piece of meat, what happens is the protein that's carrying the heme, myoglobin and muscle, opens up, the heme comes out, and catalyzes a bunch of reactions that create the volatile compounds that really give that smell, that flavor, that makes meat so compelling. Your traditional veggie burger can't get the taste anywhere near right, because they ain't got that heme. But plants contain globin molecules just like animals do. Specifically of interest to impossible foods is the root of the soy plant, which contains leg hemoglobin. This helps ferry oxygen around. It also contains that magical heme. But the amount of soy roots these scientists would need in order to produce enough heme would be outlandish. And the more efficient approach that we came up with was to uh, engineer a, a yeast and uh, have that produce uh, very high quantities of that heme. What Impossible Foods has invented is a tiny heme machine. And with meat-free heme, it has the foundation of a stunning imitation of a beef burger. So let's find out how they do it. This is where we really try to understand what makes meat meat, test each of the kind of key parameters. Impossible is trying to isolate and then recreate as many meat-like components as they can. And this machine is helping them do it. So what I have in front of you is a gas chromatogram mass spectrometer. What this does is allows for us to be able to take a sample, so say a beef sample, put it in here, we'll move this sample we have a nice little robot that'll take that sample and move it into a cooker. So then we could cook this sample at whatever temperature we want to understand what flavors are generated upon cooking. So those aromas, again, is what creates the flavor of meat. So we will now have kind of a fingerprint of every single aroma that is in beef. And then we can say, how close is the Impossible Burger? Where can we make improvements and iterate to identify how to make each of those particular flavor compounds. The other part that's really important in the, a burger or all meats is the textural component. What are the things that are driving texture in meat? Those are proteins, and we want to characterize those particular proteins. Then as we Id identify what those particular proteins' properties are, we go and look in plants for plant proteins that have those same properties. And then behind me, I have Michelle, who's one of our scientists who really takes each of those individual proteins and characterizes it, understands, is it stretchy? How much tensile strength does it have? How much water does it hold? And by characterizing each of those particular proteins, we then understand how it will behave in our particular burger. So it all comes down to these ingredients, which include the heme, wheat protein for texture, and coconut as a stand-in for fat. Add them all together, and it starts to look more and more like a beef patty. The result is a meatless burger that's so convincing, it may as well be meat. All right, pretty impressive. We even asked our resident chef to give it a taste. So it's really simulating that juicy center layer that you would get in a nice mid-rare burger. So on, you can see on the outside, we've got that nice golden crust, but in the center, it's still bloody and rare. Except this time, it's plants doing the bleeding. So let's see how it tastes. Okay. Wow. That is a lot better than I thought it would be. Wow. So why does a veggie burger need to bleed? Because this isn't targeted to vegetarians and vegans. It's designed to convert meat eaters. Okay, so it's good, sure. But is this engineered food safe? The thing is, while humans eat plenty of soy, they don't typically eat the roots, which is where you'd find this leg hemoglobin. So this is a brand new ingredient in the food supply, 
While the company isn't required by law to report its use of a new ingredient to the FDA, it did so voluntarily with soy leg hemoglobin. But the FDA determined that Impossible Foods had not yet presented sufficient evidence for the agency to recognize it as safe. However, that is not to say the FDA determined that leg hemoglobin is unsafe. And Impossible Foods says it's had experts confirm the meatless meat is perfectly fine to consume and found no adverse effects in a rat feeding study. It is structurally similar to proteins that we consume all the time. But critics say the FDA's objections warrant further testing of the Impossible Burger. In the meantime, the company is scaling its production from 300,000 to 1 million pounds a month. At the end of the day, meat production is flat out inefficient. And as our population expands, we're going to need more sustainable foods to meet the demand. So the Impossible Burger is just the beginning of a new breed of high-tech eats. And you know what they say, if it bleeds, it leads. <laughs>